<laughs> Good for you. So get me out of the hospital. I want to go home. <laughs> I've been building up to uh, doing clinical laryngeal transplantation for about 12 years and in uh, the early part of 2008 I was contacted by my colleague in America, uh, Peter Belaski, to say that he had just seen a patient who he felt would benefit from this technology. She'd already had every possible procedure uh, short of having a transplant so we'd exhausted all possible conventional means of treatment. It's the first time that the larynx and trachea have both been transplanted at the same time. In fact, it's not just those two things. We have the thyroid gland as well, which is attached to the front of the larynx. It's also unique in the fact that we have repaired the nerves in such a way that we hope the muscles will, in time, start to move in the way that normal muscles do in the larynx. And so we've borrowed and moved certain nerves around the neck to make sure that muscles open uh, when we need the airway to open and close when we need the airway to close. This operation was a long one, it took 18 hours uh, and it depended on uh, complementary expertise from a multidisciplinary team of surgeons. We've been amazed how well it's gone to be honest. Uh, she first spoke a few weeks after the surgery. You can see from the videos of that first episode how amazed she is to hear her voice. There's a brief period and then it dawns on her that she's actually spoken for the first time. And this look of amazement and pleasure comes on her face. And it makes the whole thing worthwhile. <laughs> her voice is not normal, but it has gradually improved. Uh, and it's much better now than it was at that point. It won't reach normality for a few more months yet, when the nerves finally grow back and the muscles become strong. But I'm very confident she will have a normal or near normal voice.